Woo. There everybody yeah, is. This is. Hey. Yes. Hello. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Hello. So I um so first of all, I'm your host. I'm Mariah. And before we do introductions, I'm gonna start off by telling a story that comes from my fiance who had an at-home workout fail that I think is just perfect to tell before starting this. So like three or four hours ago, he was working out with resistance bands and he puts the band through the door and then closes the door for resistance, except he put the band too far into the door. So he was stuck. So we had to use pliers and some screwdriver and another tool I don't know what the name of to like force the band outside the door. So, so which is odd. Um, it took us like 15 minutes, but he was actually literally quarantined. So with that in mind, um, why don't we get to introductions? So I'm your host. I'm Mariah. Um, I went to school at Winona State for exercise science. Um, I'm one of the few in who graduated with a degree they're not currently using, but uh, health and wellness is a passion of mine. So, and pronouns are she, her, hers. So, whoever wants to go next. I'll pick it up. I can go uh, next. Oh, sorry, you go ahead. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I am Britt Johnson. Uh, I use they, them pronouns. Um, I am a certified yoga instructor. Uh, I've taught at Real Life um, Coffee and Yoga. I have uh, done a lot of yoga quest as uh, assistant teaching. Um, so I really find it passionate and, fi and I'm very passionate about equity in joyful movement. Uh, and I am an elementary school teacher by day. That's so cool. Yeah, fourth grade, best and worst people I've ever met. <laughs> That's funny. Britt, my uh, my wife is actually a fifth grade elementary school teacher, and she oh, has similar her. things to say about fifth graders. <laughs> yeah. Once hormones come into it, I'm yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll pick up uh, where you left off. Then, hi, I'm Rob. Um, I'm a certified personal trainer. I went to school at the University of Minnesota in Duluth. I actually got my degree in anthropology with a focus in pre-Columbian archaeology. So like you, Mariah, I am super not using my degree. Uh, um, when I graduated with arts degree. But uh, I've been a personal trainer for uh, eight and a half, almost nine years now. And I am the owner of an online personal training business called D20 Athletics. Awesome. And last of all, I'm Ray. I am a writer primarily in Parenting Geeky for Twin Cities Geek. Um, I am currently a person who is trying to get an eight-year-old motivated to move around the house <laughs> because there has been a lot more uh, couch potatoing than usual due to current circumstances. I did not go to college to well, I started a dance major, but <laughs> my degree is ultimately in something else. But moving has been a lifelong passion of mine. Excellent. So uh, for anyone and everyone who's joining us, a lot of this discussion is going to range between a variety of different topics, whether it be physical fitness, uh, mental wellness during quarantine, even like parenting, exactly that. I am not a parent, but man, that must be challenging. Um, so just some general kind of tips, like what's what's getting you through quarantine health-wise, whether it's a workout, whether it's any mental health tips, tricks. Um, I'm going to leave the floor open for you. Yeah, I mean, I am an extreme extrovert, um, and my day typically is spent surrounded by 65 humans that all need to talk to me at the same time. Um, so I I had a hard time adjusting at first from like full blown, like every day, okay, I'm on the go, I'm always on. And then all of a sudden I'm like at home by myself, it's me and my wife and that's it. Uh, so I found like video calling friends has been like really helpful, video calling family, like really trying to stay connected even over distance. Uh, and then I've also found 
um, like gamifying like routines um, to be really helpful. Like, I'm not sure if anybody else uses like, um, I think it's Hab Habitica. It's like a gamified habit making um, like app where you can like get like experience points for like brushing your teeth or flossing or, you know, working out for 10 minutes or uh, things like that. So that, that's been really helpful to like keep my routine rather than just being like, oh, it's like summer vacation, I don't need to do anything, which is really hard to like not turn off and go into like summer mode. Mm -hmm. I would say for me, it, it's maybe been focusing a little bit on the concept of the impermanence of life, uh, which sounds bad, but it's, it's more of, of the idea that this will pass <laughs> and mm. it might take mm -hmm. a bit longer than, you know, I'd, it's going to be comfortable, but eventually things change. Um, I, I, we've been trying to use a, a similar thing to gamification for motivation, at least uh, for my daughter, where she's currently working on earning points by doing various activities that aren't Animal Crossing as fun and as <laughs> mentally necessarily as that is. <laughs> One cannot play Animal Crossing for 24 hours a day, mainly because there's other people in the house that want to play the game. And also because <laughs> there's, I mean, it's, it's just, it may be filling at least a mental need, but it doesn't fill a physical need. Um, so she has been working on getting points, uh, some of which can be get done through physical activities to uh, get enough points for a giant uh, squishy cat that is right cool. forward and is also a unicorn. <laughs> uh, and for me, uh, it's trying to stay active obviously is a huge part of it but i am a total workaholic i came out of like a seven day work week like before quarantine started i don't think i had like a weekend programmed into my schedule for the better part of like two years um so that's brand new to me like not tying my idea of who i am as a person to my level of productivity has been a difficult thread to separate from myself um we also have a one-year-old so she keeps and like i said my wife is a teacher so she's doing distance learning right now so most of the time it's me with the baby and she's able to uh, pop in on her breaks and help out sometimes but it's just like going from being with clients and talking to adults about adult things and doing workouts and programming all this stuff and running a business to just like toddler time full blast 24 7 there are no breaks for like what is like 50 days now <laughs> it's a lot um, and I found that um, I write my like daily goals on that little post-it note and I just stick it right on the uh, dinner table where I sit down to drink my coffee or be on the computer next to the baby. So I'll just like cross things off as I do them. And then I want to, I want to accomplish everything on one post-it note in a day and it just transfers onto the next day's post-it note. But I found that um, setting small goals for myself over the course of the day, and it's only as a day, not like the whole week. I've, I'll go crazy if I do that. But daily small goals that are super duper achievable has been very helpful for me to stay active and stay sane. Yeah, and I would I would agree with that too. I mean, because I'm a, I used to go work downtown and I would take the bus to go to work, and now I'm at home where I'm sitting and on my laptop, and I just I don't move much. So I think it does help whether it is goal setting or just planning out planning out some sort of routine, whether it's like I work out always on like a new lunch hour as my lunch work mm. break. Um, and that seems to really help me or like even uh, what we're earlier that they use that app to really help uh, mm -hmm. give more fun to the routine. Which I haven't, which I haven't heard of. Can you repeat that one more time? Like, what was that? What was that called? It's called Habitica. It's like Habitica. Habitica. And it's free, which is nice. Because I've used like Flora to help like stay focused with like work time. Like, all right, I'm going to stay super focused for like 20 minutes and then I get like a five or 10 minute break. But Habitica is like nice because it breaks down your whole day rather than just 20 minute times. Sure. So. Yeah. Perfect. Well, 
I think uh, going off of Rob's point, another lead into something that I think is going to be really a good discussion point is for anyone who's stuck in quarantine with kids, which I, like I said, I'm not a parent, so I don't have to worry about this, but how do you prioritize, you know, your health when you are stuck indoors with kids who would normally be in school? I think that might be something interesting to touch on. Mm -hmm. That's not something I would know. Uh, at least for my daughter, at least I can say that, um, like most humans who, when they find themselves in a frustrating situation, giving her something that she can control has made a huge difference. <laughs> mm. uh, we, we try and outline at least here's the expectations um we expect that you are going to do your schoolwork each day because you know it's what you do that's that's your job it's part of the expectation that you will be doing a little bit to be active every day we will give you options of ideas to do if you have other ideas then that's great and you know, we'll talk about them, see if they work for what the goal is that you're trying to achieve. Uh, it's, I guess, more basically outlining together, here's what you have to pick from. You can pick the order, you can figure out how this is going to go together, and it kind of makes for things a little bit smoother. Uh, sometimes there might be a little bit more nudging that's needed, but I mean, that's true for everyone. And sometimes there's just big feelings that need to be dealt with. And <laughs> that's <laughs> very much true for everyone as well, too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You? So you, stream, you stream your workouts through mm -hmm. your facebook group i mean so yep. i'm assuming you have a schedule then worked out obviously so there's not interruptions there from the little one like tell me how that works for you so have... oh sorry oh, sorry go ahead uh i was gonna say uh yeah we have our daughter on more or less a nap schedule um so she usually naps around like nine o'clock in the morning so i'll try and um stream then if I have the chance. Uh, we're also oh, very fortunate to be able to still drop her off at um, my in-laws because they don't go anywhere. They're both retired. So you drop her off there twice a week for uh, some daycare. So I'm able to stream on Monday mornings and Friday mornings because that's when she's there. And for my personal workouts, I'll work out here in my, my dungeon, my brojo. Um, but that takes so i i've stopped trying to work out when she naps because i've learned it's very unpredictable um if all i needed was 10 minutes to get and move around then i could probably make that happen but for my personal workouts i need something i need a little bit more time to be focused so i'll push the push my personal stuff back until my wife is off of work and she's able to take the baby for a while for like an hour to an hour and a half sometimes and i can come down here do my thing get showered be ready to go um, so I'm able to play teamwork a lot, a lot more with that with my partner, which has been extremely helpful. So um, supporting each other has been extremely helpful and important during this whole process with the kid. So it sounds like really it's scheduling workouts around um, little ones nap, nap mm -hmm. time, um, but also communicating with communicating with your partner, whoever you're quarantined with doesn't have to be a romantic partner friend whoever is with you at that moment just coordinating with them is really your key to success totally absolutely yeah and then um any thoughts from you brad i mean you, you know you mentioned you're a uh, fourth grade fourth grade teacher i mean i don't i don't know how that's really impacting the teaching that you do with them virtually even yeah um i know for I me, mean, I try to like, just like in general, like in my life, I try to assign things that kids can work on on their own. So like that involve a lot of videos so that it's not as dependent on parents having to help them because parents are either still working at home or they're still having to go out and work, uh, depending on if they work at, if they're an essential worker. Um, I've been doing yoga uh, as part of like our after school enrichment program virtually with them. 
um, but I made it so that families can also join in. So I've done sessions with, you know, fourth, fifth graders, and then they have like toddlers that come and join and also try to move. Um, I have a, I have one parent that, you know, joins in, um, just trying to make it a space that like parents can also just take the time to participate and do something with their kiddos that they don't have to like think about. They can just move their bodies and they don't have to entertain them. Um, cause it, it's, it's a huge change in routine for the kids. Like they're having a hard time adjusting. Like, um, you know, they might not always say it, but I have kids that are like, it feels like I moved away. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, this is this is hard. You know, we're here for the rest of the school year, not with each other. So it's kind of trying to teach them that it's okay to have those big feelings and it's okay to be flexible and that, you know, it might feel uncertain, but, you know, we're doing this so we stay safe. So I'm just picturing a Zoom or some sort of meeting with little kids doing yoga and that just seems like <laughs> melting my heart and my <laughs> mental image of what that looks like. I just think that's... We, that's we make a lot of uh, animal noises and uh, like a seated cat and cow where you run through like an imaginary field of flowers and then you hug the cutest puppy you've ever seen. Um, so you give yourself a hug. Um, yeah, no, it's great. Like kids get really into it and they really like to make the noises. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's that's just too that's too cute. Um, why don't we? So why don't we even like talk about yoga? I mean, I know Britt, um, you know a lot about Yoga Quest, but I mean, even like, are there any other local yoga studios doing virtual classes? I mean, I know Yoga Quest is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yoga Quest is doing virtual classes. They did a uh, Tiger King Quest recently, and they also did a uh, Star Trek Quest. Um, and, uh, I know that they have their online, um, like program where it's sort of like Netflix, but it's like yoga, uh, yoga quests essentially, uh, which is a little strange. Like when I do them at home, I'm like, oh, look, I'm in this video, uh, which is kind of like a weird, uh, thing to like, be like, all right, I'm doing this adventure and now I'm watching myself weird. Um, but I know there's a lot of studios that are offering things, uh, through like Facebook live. Um, other ones are doing zoom where you, uh, pay for like your class and then you zoom on into the meeting. Um, there's, I would say there's a handful of like free ones. It is, it does tend to be a little bit more unpredictable with like free, uh, yoga classes online. Uh, sometimes you can find them through Instagram, but you know, it can be all over the world, which is actually really cool. Um, but if we're thinking for like accessibility, it's a little more hit and miss on whether or not it's a really actual body positive space. Mm -hmm. um, so I know Jessamine Stanley uh, does a virtual class. She does some really cool stuff around um, like accessibility um, as well as like Diane Bondi. She does online classes uh, and she really helped create the yoga for all movement, uh, which is really awesome. So all of her postures, everything like that, um, are 100% accessible, taught multiple ways, whether it's in a chair, seated on the ground, completely standing. Um, so I mean, there's a lot of things out there. You just kind of have to dig through a lot of it to get to the really, really good stuff, I think. Hmm. Um, yeah. That's super so dope. You Can you say... tell me then? I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Rob. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, can you give me that name of that uh, that, that accessible yoga class again? That yeah. we were just talking about? Um, it's called um, Diane Bondi, and it's called Yoga for All. She actually, her and Amber Carnes, uh, they created, it's actually a training program, so you can actually get certified in how to teach all of these, like, multiple ad adaptations for movements. Um, oh. It's really cool. Um, yeah, no, totally worth it. Um, she's yeah, Diane Bondi is amazing, fantastic, uh, like woman of color who's like, she's like the name really for accessible yoga. So. Cool. I'll check that out. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. The other thing I want to mention too, um, one thing we thought that was going to be super useful after this is over uh, is to compile 
basically a huge recap of everything we talked about and put it under a post for FitGeek. So if we are talking very fast, which I know I'm the queen of talking fast, um, we hope to have that up too. So that in case uh, you're looking for something we said uh, five or 10 minutes ago, um, we hope to have a recap post for FitGeek as well. So just wanted to throw that out there since there's been a lot of good things um, being mentioned thus far. So one thing that one thing that was mentioned even with um, even with Britt's last point is yeah accessibility. I mean gyms are closed. So what are some movements, whether it be yoga, weightlifting, any way that you move your body? without equipment. For many of us, if we rely on a space that has this equipment for us, when it's not there, it's kind of like, whoa, what do I do now? So yeah. if we can even just brainstorm, what are some good movements, whether it be for any anyone able-bodied, um, you know, disability, like accessible movements that one can do with little to no equipment? Well, if you want to know about home workouts, I got you covered. Um, so I should I should say, speaking from a uh, perspective of someone who works with almost exclusively very able able bodied clients, so I'm speaking very quickly again. Um, the stuff that I have a lot of my clients do online, if they have no equipment, is we do a lot of obviously body weight work. I'm a big fan of burpees, lunges. We do way too many push ups, and the workouts that I stream, um, I know because I do them as well. Uh, we also do, I really like to recommend to people too, especially right now, because I think we've mentioned a few times sitting a lot more, um, is stuff like planks, prone planks in your elbows and your toes and hip bridges, which I think Britt will probably know something about as well. It's definitely a big yoga movement. Yeah. So strengthening your core, your torso, everything from pits to hips is your core too, not just your abs, um, front, <laughs> back sides, the whole thing all three dimensions got to be worked but um really work on your your butt muscles because they're just getting flattened out as we sit down and play animal crossing for 18 hours a day i'm guilty of that too <laughs> getting those to like turn on and like flex and like i'm making this motion because you're going up and down um getting those to turn on is going to be a lot of great work for those muscles to support your back and your posture and stuff like that so that when we do get to get up and walk around everyone's not walking around like this we can actually be like highly evolved human beings and like interact with each other setting up right. But yeah, there's a ton of options. Like obviously you can see that my stuff, I've been I've been accumulating stuff. I know that sweet headset. Um, I know I've been accumulating stuff here for years. Um, so I've got kind of a dope setup, but like not everyone has uh, a bike. Not everyone has kettlebells, several kettlebells. Almost no one has a, a co-coach co Terrence hanging out in their backyard. <laughs> um, but if you can find equipment, stuff like a single kettlebell, I'm a big fan of. Uh, Mariah mentioned resistance bands, getting a lot of mileage out of that. Um, so if you're looking to build a space, build a home gym, or just like a corner in your kitchen where you want to work out, you don't need a lot. Like you don't need a bike, you don't need an elliptical, you don't need a bow flex or whatever. Something that can help you move things that are heavier than you would normally move them. If that makes sense. Even just like a backpack full of books. You can use that for squats or presses or just wear it and walk up. And when she was very young and our, our uh, daughter would just cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. And I didn't have time to get a workout. We have this, like the baby strap. And I just put her in the front pack and I just walk up and down the stairs for like 20 minutes. And I'd get my workout and then she'd fall asleep. So that was a good way to do that. So really being able to flex your gray matter as well as your soft tissue uh, becomes very important in times like this when there's not the traditional equipment that's necessarily available. Yeah, uh, piggybacking on um, out of the ring fit at all, or are you familiar with that at all? I am familiar with it. Uh, we do have a uh, um, a switch. I don't. I have not used it. <laughs> um, I haven't played it. I know a couple of people who have played it, and they say it's super great. Um, I was one of the people who played with the uh, we. The Wii Fit, when that came with the balance uh, board, 
which was like exceedingly okay. That's like the hardest. That's like a heavy <laughs> C plus that I can give that machine. But the the Ring Fit sounds like it's actually something that's very useful. I have a client who uh, she and her son use it to work out a lot. And she says it's the thing that motivates him the most to get up and move because you can get an adventure in and you get points and you level up. And apparently the bad guys are all kettlebells, which I feel personally attacked for. <laughs> <laughs> but I, whatever, whatever gets you moving, right? Yeah, we, we've been using that at home. That's one of the things that I've been able to motivate the uh, my daughter with just because it's a video game, uh, but you're also moving around. It's very much... Um, body movement based um just on body weight so uh well the the ring does have some resistance so there's some pulling of that there's some pushing of that to add a little bit in um i, I since she is young i have been trying to at least keep an eye on her while she's doing it to make sure that she's doing the the exercises correctly uh is I mean eight you're young enough so that if you do something slightly off your body will probably forgive you but it's not a great habit to get into because then you discover you're doing things wrong you're much older and it's much less forgiving of your body <laughs> um and if too like what rob was saying if you're looking for something um like to do more body weight type workouts and you know you don't have access to kettlebells uh, an easy way to kind of like make your own kettlebell is actually just use a milk container uh, because then you can kind of, I believe it's like eight pounds if you have a full gallon container filled with water. Please don't quote me on that. I teach reading, not math. Um, but you can also like adjust how heavy it is uh, depending on, you know, like, oh, I'm just really going to work, you know, the biceps day or do arms and you know, kettlebell or, you know, more or less kettlebell swings with a gallon jug, or you can use it as something like lighter. Um, also, uh, if you're doing yoga and you're finding stuff doesn't feel good in your body, um, moving things to a chair, planking up against the wall, doing push-ups up against the wall, um, using pillows as bolsters, um, like couch cushions, um, a chair as a block, something just sort of sturdy, um, on Instagram, there are so many options for like at home, like yoga props. Like even if you just search DIY yoga props, there's so many, like you can like using the wall is one of my favorite things to do for just any sort of yoga pose or extra core work, things like that. The other thing I love too is soup cans, silly, silly stuff. But uh, soup cans, black beans, lentils, what else comes in a can? Vegetables, that's all That's all I've got. But uh, even just doing like a bicep work, tricep work, um, yeah, I, it's, it, it always boggles my mind when I have a can in each hand. And after like 30 seconds, my arms are shaking and I'm like, wow, that's only a can. Um, that <laughs> makes a difference. Um, otherwise, I use textbooks, which mm. as a college student, that I have textbooks everywhere that I have paid so much money for that I just don't really need but don't want to get rid of them because I've spent hundreds <laughs> of dollars on them. Perfect, right? Um, you know, Britt mentioned a, a, like a yoga brick. I mean, hey, textbook, probably not that comfortable, but you know. Gotta, gotta do what you gotta Textbooks. do. Awesome version for a block. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> hey, this, I've got my oh, there he is. essentials yeah. of strength and conditioning. This thing, like, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty heavy. I mean, after a while, it's a good <laughs> shoulder press. Um, dictionary, really challenge yourself. I don't have a dictionary, but um, if you do, That's ideal. all up here. I did actually you know, mention <laughs> the dictionary. <laughs> I did see someone post on Instagram today. She was doing wall sits and she was holding in her hands all the uh, RPG system books that she has for like <laughs> D&D 5th edition and 4th edition and like Pathfinder and she was pressing them overhead and the caption was like, God, just give me like a one page rule set or something like that. There's too many rules for some of these games. And you mentioned cans earlier, Mariah. I have a, 
I have a, a, a coworker, another coach, and she streams classes. And her recommendation is to use wine bottles so that if your workout starts to feel very, very heavy or need some hydration, pop those bad boys open. They get lighter as it goes, and everything feels easier after a couple <laughs> of reps. More 12 ounce curls as well. Get those beer cans in there. Um, but I did actually want to uh, wheel back on something that um, Diane brought up, talking about working out with your daughter and how being eight, you can bounce back from almost anything that happens to you physically, injury wise. Um, and then Britt touched on it as uh, well. Like, um, I feel like injury is something that we think of as happening when you play sport or if you're uh, weightlifting in the gym or something like that. But it can definitely happen at home and as someone who's used to coaching people through exercise and movements one of the things that i would probably advise people who are picking up home fitness for the first time or who are very new at it to be aware of is injury not pushing your limits making sure you're getting a good warm-up making sure you're getting a good cool down um and yoga is a great way to do that um if you have a foam roller if you know what that is if you have that around your house definitely use that you got nothing but time now so why not be using it um, but it's easy, I think, to, especially when you first start out, it's really easy to get like super duper gung ho and want to like hit it hard every single day and do like a hundred burpees every single day. I have this, uh, workout that is based, it's not based on, it is the workout from one punch man where you just do a hundred pushups, a hundred setups, a hundred squats, and then do a bunch of cardio for a hundred calories in one day. Do your best every day. Yeah, um, no too. one's hair has fallen out yet. I, 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 I cut this in. My hair didn't fall out. This I cut it this way. Um, <laughs> but like that's something that I have people do like once a week, tops, maybe. And that's for my more like experienced people. Um, but it's easy to look for something. Like if you go on Instagram and just say, I don't know, home workout, fat loss, strength challenge. Stuff's going to pop up that you might not necessarily be ready for. And if you're someone who is who's used to doing only like, a dancing video game doing like plyometric Bulgarian split squats. Okay. I'll just jump right into that. Like, that's not a great idea. Like, you don't want to start there. That's like level five stuff. You should be doing level one stuff and working your way back up, which I think is something that a game like the ring fit adventure would be great at because I have to assume it starts you off at more basic movements and then sort of progresses mm -hmm. things into more complex, more intense, more conditioning and strength as time goes on. Another thing with the foam roller, just because I personally do not have a foam roller, mm. um, one thing you could, I have two suggestions. Number one, um, you could roll your yoga mat up to be super, super rolled tight and use that kind of to as a roller. Or um, I've used like a tennis ball or a baseball. And if you put that between like your shoulder and the wall, you can use that as well to create the same effect. Just because I personally don't have a foam roller. I need one. Mm. I don't have it. So PVC pipes work fantastic. Whoa. Um, as well as um I've I've played with like a rolling pin uh on like shins and like quads. Uh it works great. Um but it was intense. It was definitely yeah. uh a very intense sensation is what I'm gonna call that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like that description a lot. <laughs> yeah, an intense sensation. It's very, that just very horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then, um, so okay. So, so to recap, just a couple of really good equipment pieces that were suggested were well, textbooks, the uh, roller, um, bands, um, body weight stuff because rob you have you have a workout video to show us right um i do do i have to link it or is it already linked up i guess we'll see i guess we'll find magic. out because I, I don't have yeah rob did submit oh. rob did submit a workout video i for submitted us. okay good so you guys get to see some i believe so some squats in action here what because and i have i have done rob's workouts before twice yeah it was it was it was definitely tough. It was fun. Recommend it for sure. But mm, I was sore. An intense sensation, would you say? <laughs> <laughs> like delayed by like 24, 48 hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there it is. Delayed sensation.
dope. Well, time release intensity. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> there we so go. Geeks, this is Look at this coach nerd. Rob, B20 Athletics, and my assistant coach, Terrence, coming at you from the Brojo. Everyone's pretty much stuck at home right now. And if you're worried about your health and fitness, I've got a couple of recommendations for you. I have two movements that we're going to go over today. The first one is going to be the burpee. This is going to be a great strength and conditioning option for your whole body, which you need zero equipment for. And the second piece is going to be a hip bridge, which you don't necessarily need equipment for, but it's going to be a very helpful, very important piece of strengthening for your posterior chain as we're going through a lot of sitting around time right now. So for the burpee, I'll go through the classic version first and give you a few modifications. And then for the bridge, we'll go for the classic version of that one first and I'll give you some spicy mods for that one. So burpee, full body. I'm going to start from a standing position. I'm going to squat down, clap my hands on the floor, jump the feet backwards, hit a push up, jump the feet back in, and give a little hop at the top. That's my regular version. A lot of different modifications for this one. For first, I can put my hands on the floor, step the feet back, hit that push up, or for my push up, I can always bring that back down to the knees as well if I need a little modification for that one. Boom. And then bring your feet back up however you need to, and then squat up, jump, always optional. I encourage it though. The big thing on this one that you want to be careful of is your back position here. A lot of times people, even experienced athletes, when they get fatigued, will wind up curling down here with this, this kind of really bad caveman spine here. What you want to do is squat. Hit that one, shoot the legs back, do your push-up, whatever you're going to do. You can even ditch the push-up if, if you don't want it. Bring it back here, and this is where it happens. Like that. Don't want that. Shift your hips down, torso up, squat into that hop or into that full-on stand. Whatever you want to do. How many burpees do you do? I don't know. Enough. How many burpees is enough? I don't know. Until you don't want to do any more. And that's probably <laughs> five short enough. The bridge. You always have like more said, burpees than you. Chain. What does that mean? The posterior chain is a lot of muscles that kind of happen everything in your posterior here. We're focusing a lot on glutes and hamstrings with this particular movement. Something that gets pretty angry and tight when you spend a lot more time sitting on the couch, binging Netflix, eating chips, and playing Animal Crossing. But what I'm going to do play a lot of Animal Crossing is twice in our a lying group. down flat position on the floor. No, don't be deceived. This is not the uh, whole movement. I'm going to keep my animal feet crossing is basically on the floor. outside the RPG that. right now. <laughs> it, it really <laughs> is. <laughs> my arms can kind of do whatever I want them to do, but for this one, I'm going to bend first and then press down as I push my feet through the floor and extend my hips up in the sky here. Now, what I want to be doing is squeezing my booty muscles, yeah, as I come up, yeah. If you start to feel your quads fire up here, the top of your legs, or these guys, your hip flexors, are very tight and angry, or you feel like the work's happening on the top of your legs, not on the posterior, what I'll have you do is grab a surface like a bench. If you don't have a bench, that's okay. You can use a stack of books, you can use a chair, you can use a, a couch, books. whatever you have around and put your feet up on top of that surface, okay? With the higher surface here, same deal. This is slightly like spicy, Ooh, this is like a go. mild version. That's gonna force, the higher up my feet are, it's gonna force my posterior chain to do the work a little bit more. And now this one, we have a couple of different options. I can rep it out here, do like 10 or 15 at a time. You can see I'm taking a little bit of a pause at the top here to really squeeze, really get that mind muscle connection. I'm thinking about squeezing. And Brit, if you have comments on my bench, I would actually love to hear because I know it's or not necessarily like a super squeeze, tight yoga movement yoga that I'm doing here. in this video. Again, hands are doing whatever. Well, it's interesting. Um, in yoga, while, it's usually like well, we tell you not to squeeze your glutes. Place. It's like ah. it should be straightening your low back in yoga. So it's like a low it's back right. exercise rather, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, bringing the feet up for me is something that I was always taught to engage the glutes more. Yeah, no, um, I think that's interesting because I think it does something similar. I think it just depends on where in your body it's working, mm -hmm. um, which is really interesting. And that's, um, and that's interesting, too, because some of the workout videos that are every single time that bridge, like that glute bridge um, mm -hmm. exercise is done, I swear, everyone says squeeze the butt. Like every yeah. single workout video says, yeah, squeeze the butt when doing a glue bridge. So I think that's really, I think that's a really interesting point. 
Yeah, I think the, the intent of the kind of workout that you're doing kind of changes what you what you focus on, but your brain connection to that muscle group. Yeah, and I, th I think it too depends where uh, in yoga, it's, it's usually used as like a spine sort of strengthener as opposed to like mm -hmm. a glute sort of strengthening one, which I think really just changes, you know, the muscles that you engage to do it. Um, sure. I really like that you lifted your feet though to do the bridge. Uh, mm. Like that, that's like nice. Cause then you can even do that with your textbooks again and give yourself varying levels of challenge, um, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Brett, is there a, uh, and doing the yoga bridge? Cause I, I'm like stuck on this as a posture thing. Is there like a, a certain cue that you would give your people for finding the right position or you mentioned because we're talking obviously about using different muscle groups like what would be the intent of that movement and what kind of cues would you give someone setting up for it yeah um i would usually use a bridge like towards the end so once we've uh, made our way down to the floor um just because when i teach yoga i try to make it super accessible to all body types and especially if getting down onto the floor from standing or in a chair is difficult i don't want you to have to get down onto the floor multiple times um or you know more than is comfortable um so i would have us probably start uh like sitting and then laying down uh, on our back um and then uh bending your knees putting your feet in front of you um i like to have mine so i can kind of like touch my ankles but that's just a personal preference it, it doesn't really change your bridge depending on how far or close to your booty they are um so i mine are usually pretty up close um, and then uh, engaging your core and then sending your hips forward. So it's kind of pulling uh, on your abs, um, but then trying to like keep your glutes relaxed. So it's really strengthening that, the front of the hips, the low back, uh, but like avoiding just like clenching up. Um, Yeah, that is interesting how it's like the wanna... same mechanical movement, but we focus on, sorry, <laughs> how it's the same mechanical no, movement, you're good. we just focus on the complete opposite sides of the body. Yeah, and then you, know, if, I was... uh, you really, oh, yeah. oh, sorry. No, go, no, go <laughs> ahead. I'll go after. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, and if too, I really like that you did the, like sort of the chest expansion too. I really enjoy doing that where you send your arms underneath you without touching your body because that also brings it mm. from just like low back hips to also like opening up your chest, stretching into your pectorals just a little bit. And yeah. it, it gives you especially if you feel like you're not that strong, it, it helps give you like a base of support underneath you as you lift your hips up, which is really nice. Definitely. And that's actually something that I do later on in that same video, uh, holding the bridge up high and then like putting your arms underneath and like lacing the fingers to get the mm -hmm. lockout for the chest opener too. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. No, I so was weird. even, um, no, what I was even going to say with, um, the video that um rob did so thank you for submitting that by the way um oh, for sure. one thing one thing with like push-ups too and i think another discussion point with this as well is what what kind of exercises should we discuss for any of us geeks who have low back pain um knee um not the best knees i know i deal with that personally um like for push-ups for example you can do push-ups against a wall so if getting down on the ground is difficult but i think even if we talk just briefly about some exercises for um anyone who yeah who may not be able to do a full push-up or a full squat mm. or um, just to like a good exercises to do if yeah if you are experiencing any of those discomforts like yeah low back pain maybe trouble getting down to the floor, anything like that. Sure. So I think, um, just to jump in on that, uh, I think that the uh, assumption I'll say is that if you're going to start working out the easiest thing you can do is body weight exercise, like squats and pushups and stuff like that. But if you find that you can't do the push up or a body weight squat without pain in your back or your knees, especially, um, finding a weighted implement, uh, 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 much more easy. You can modify a lot easier. So doing something like step ups or step downs off of your bottom stair to work your legs one at a time. Um, you can control the alignment a lot better. Um, 
doing something for your upper body with weights like an overhead press or leaning against the wall for the push-up, making sure all your alignment, of course, is always in line. Um, also very, very important. Um, uh, Britt, do you have anything for that? I had a total brain fart on what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say uh, doing wall, like doing postures against the wall is great, like wall push-ups, wall planks. Uh, but thinking specifically about back, and I'm thinking like low back, uh, I would avoid any sort of like back bend, sort of like really deep chest expansions. Like it's not going to help you. It's just going to hurt. You're mm -hmm. probably going to injure yourself more because you're like, oh, I can push through this. Um, please don't push through it. Please listen to right. your body. Yeah, um, definitely. I would say um, like ways to like kind of help. Like I know I'm not used to sitting as often as I have been since distance learning has started. Um, I would say like forward folds um, are like the best thing ever. Like if you have a tight mm -hmm. back, uh, and, and even if your legs are tight, um, like having um, like a bend in your knees and just kind of leaning forward and just trying to release into that is really, really going to help that. Um, and sitting in a chair, I would say even for like yoga, if you even if you were to follow along with like a typical um, like a vinyasa video on YouTube, like any generic vinyasa video on YouTube, if you do the exact same postures while sitting in a chair, that'll save your knees. Um, I just like to scoot forward towards like the edge of the chair and a lot of some of the postures um, I've done, which I find typically pretty easy for myself, um, like standing as I'm sitting in the chair, I'm like, holy crap, this is really difficult or it's difficult in a different way. Like maybe I feel it more in my yeah. core. Um, so finding ways that that feel good, but also feel like you're you're working um, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's going to look different for everybody because there's like and literally like bodies are put together differently. Like I know my shoulders, I have really weird shoulder flexibility. So when I teach a class, I have to like put that ahead. Like yours probably isn't going to look like mine because my shoulder blades are really flat. So they slide up and down my back. Like, <laughs> yeah. And now you mentioned too, um, specifically vinyasa style yoga. I know there's a bunch of different kinds and I'm yeah. like vaguely familiar, but if I wanted to do a yoga workout, say so search it up on YouTube that was a workout versus one that was like based for like stretching and recovery, like what sort of things should I be looking for? Yeah, I would say look for a vinyasa style. Vinyasa is going to be like the, the main component is like every movement has a breath. Um, so that's going to be a lot more sun salutations, um, a lot more like up, down, downward dogs, chaturangas, mm -hmm. which are like high plank to low plank to ground. Um, it's going to be a lot more things like that uh, and a lot more of them. Uh, you'll probably okay. uh, break a sweat during that. If you're looking for something a little more like chill, uh, Hatha style yoga is uh, one of my favorites. Um, it's not less of a workout. It's more you spend a little longer in the pose rather than mm. going through it very quick by each breath. Um, so you can like really kind of feel like it's more of a sustained hold. So it holds your muscles in place longer. Um, mm. so like, you know, a chair pose in a vinyasa style class is gonna be a lot shorter than like a chair pose in a Hatha where you're like, Oh God, I've been sitting in a, you know, air squat for, you know, 30 seconds. I'm done now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and two, if you were to type in, like, um, even if you were just like looking on YouTube, um, there's a couple like. Yoga with Adrian um, is one YouTube channel that um, has a hers. lot. Of, she's she's really quite po like body positive. It's usually not like nothing yeah. to do with like fat burning calorie. It's just kind of like like move with how you feel, uh, which is great. Um, and she has and she's really like she's very specific in each video to tell you like what sort of workout or what type of yoga it is. Like, oh, this is you know a relaxing mm -hmm. yoga for stress or. This is yoga to work your core, which is really specific and is really helpful for someone who's like, I'm stuck. I'm in my house. I'm stressed. I just want to move my body. So it, it's less like a surprise and you, you, it's more of you know what you're getting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I linked a video uh, with Yoga with Adrian, or at least her channel, I think. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah cause I forgot. Because I love her, too. <laughs> Yeah, she's great. 
Hello everyone, welcome to Yoga with Adrian. Yes. I'm Adrian and this is Benji. And today we have a beautiful Aww. practice for vulnerability. I love Benji. So if you have He's a so towel cute. or a blanket and you want to bring it to the cutest practice, dog. Do. If not, no cutest worries. Yes. Hop into something comfy and let's get started. So if you brought a towel or a blanket to the practice today, you can go ahead and lay it out um, on your mat, perhaps for this first bit, because we are going to begin today's session in a fetal position. So take your time coming down to the ground and you can choose which side, left side or right side. And you're just gonna come to lay on your blanket or on the mat. And whatever arm is uh, down, you're gonna use that one, bottom arm as a pillow. And if you can, right, every body is different. So honor your body and the shape of your body here right away. But to the best of your ability, think about creating a little curvature in the low back by bringing the knees up. So I don't have to come super tight, right? We can kind of honor a little bit of space for the belly. Um, let's actually do that, all of us, embrace that gesture, that loving gesture. But best you can, bring the knees up just enough so you feel a little bit of length in the low back. All right, and then just take a second to get settled in here. You can allow your top arm to rest wherever feels good, either gently on the ground, maybe on the hip, the thigh, the booty. <laughs> And here we are, man, we're, we're doing it. Close your <laughs> eyes, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, my darling friend, just One start of the to things notice. too with, with yoga with Adrian specifically, uh, what Britt said, uh, she is pretty clear in the beginning of her videos what this video is gonna be. So. Mm -hmm. I have, I don't know if I've done that video, but there was one video that was probably 10 minutes and I probably just laid on my mat the whole time. But <laughs> after a really long work day, like that was ideal. I didn't want to do this epic squat weights, right. blah, blah, blah. Um, so that video worked. And then there's, she does like series too. So there are a couple of videos that it, like based on profession, there's a yoga video. So I know there was what? one that was, yeah, it was like yoga for teachers. And then it was yoga for, I don't even know, yoga for like nurses who stand all day. And, um, and it's, a, there's just so much that, I mean, I did it. I'm not a teacher, but I, uh, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was just, it's, and then um, there is um, she does like more if you're looking for like yoga as a workout, like she has a couple abdominal ones that are killer um, if that's your style. Right. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yoga with Adrian is one of my one of my favorite channels, hands down. Very cool. I, I really appreciate that yoga with Adrian is free. Um, mm. I would say my my only like criticism of yoga with Adrian is that she is very like that very typical like what you expect a yoga teacher to look like which is hard sure. like she does a really great job of like you know reminding everyone that everybody is different but but it is it is hard sometimes you're like oh man now where's my belly supposed to go um mm -hmm. which is like a little tough um so and, and it's hard because there's not as many like yoga with adrian is she has a very large following uh, and there's not as many like options um quite like yoga with Adrian. She has a really nice variety. Um, so, yeah. I thought it was very interesting that the uh, the clip, I don't know whose clip that was, if that was yours, uh, Brett, that you chose, or if it was Mariah's, but um, I just, I guess I think it was interesting and I appreciate that you chose a yoga for vulnerability. Um, and that you mentioned too, like doing the, the class where you just lay down on your mat for 10 minutes, but after a long day, you don't want to do this epic session. Uh, uh, I'll even say that not every workout has to be 
a hundred burpees in 10 minutes or you die. Like I've, um, I think sometimes a lot of times, uh, fitness gets tied up in like your sense of self, I guess, like your identity, like you, we attach a lot of morality to it. Um, I see this a lot in people who struggle with eating, like tying morality to food, tying morality to like self morality. Like what is my worth as a person? If I don't do this many squats, if I don't, bench press as much as the next guy or if I eat such and such a thing today when I should have been eating a different such and such a thing today. Um, and I think that's something that with everyone being locked down at home has probably a potential to like grow in weird ways. It's like, I don't want to say spiral necessarily, but I think that's a definite possibility for some people. I like right now is a time that if you are a person who struggles with like an eating disorder or even disordered eating, like now is a time that like a lot of people are seeing spikes in that because you're at home. And so you're, you actually have that time, that mental space slightly to be like, Oh, I'm at home. I know I don't have to actually leave work to get a snack. Cause I'm hungry right now. But then they're, you know, depending on your relationship with food, whether it's, you know, and that can even depend on the day. And yeah. if you're feeling you have a, you know, maybe even if you're, you're like, Oh, I don't feel like my job is that high stress, but I don't have the spoons right now to work out, like mm -hmm. being able to acknowledge like, oh, hey, I'm not in a space right now that I can do a full workout. That's okay. Like being able to recognize that is important and not placing guilt or blame on that is yeah. really, really important. Like maybe, maybe just if you feel like you have the ability to go outside during your lunch break that time, take a walk around your block. You know what? You moved your body. You, you did something that took care of yourself. You don't need to, you know, do a really a hardcore workout every day because like right now, like we're all in a, you know, a collective trauma. So it's yeah. our, our brains are in, you know, fight or flight and in survival mode. So it's hard to like, now is a hard time to say, Oh, I'm going to do a workout routine every single day. Like you just have to do your best and your best is different every day. You know, we're all in this yeah. weird situation. I actually, Whatever. right before I came down here to, pop on the stream i was reading an onion article on my phone and the headline was like man surprised that uh biggest trauma in life is not the bump he needs to be more creative and like the article is about this guy i seemed like hey i didn't i didn't think that like being followed from my job and having the uh, global economy crash and being stuck at home with this incredibly emotional stress i thought that was going to be the thing that pushed me into writing my novel and like picking up the guitar again but it's weird that it's not happening that way <laughs> I think a lot of people felt felt kind of feel the same way. Like early on, I feel like there's this big push of like, we're gonna do it. We have all the time in the world. Let's let's like put up the walls, let's paint up paint the rooms and do all the workouts. And now people are just kind of like, Man, this sucks. Like I'm feeling it. Like even myself earlier this week, like, dude, I was feeling it. Like I, I'm able to stay pretty busy and I like I said, I'm a very pro productive minded person. I need goals. Like I've been very fortunate i should say to be in a very healthy mental state for the majority of the quarantine but like this past week man because the baby had uh she was sick at the beginning of the week and her sleep was all over the place so my sleep's all over the place she just screams scream scream all the time because she's one i don't know what she wants because she can't talk so i'm just like very frustrated i'm like feeling it now um have i made it clear that i'm feeling it yet uh <laughs> but... we've been talking about like staff meetings like it's like mm. everybody has kind of hit a wall like this last like week and yeah. a half. Like yeah. people who are like, I could work at home all the time. This is great. All of, all of a sudden everyone is like, no, like the kids are feeling it. Like mm. adults are feeling it. Like it's kind of hit that point. We're all like, Oh God, this is like, we're all just in our houses with our families. And it is a yep. lot of time in our houses with our families in our <laughs> <Sure> houses. <is. laughs> Yeah, you know what they say about um, distance, right? It makes the heart grow fonder and familiarity <laughs> breeds family bonding, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, Ray, you're at home with your kid now, right? She, she's off from school. Are you guys hitting that wall too? Um, We, yes, <laughs> to a point. <laughs> um, we're, I mean, we're kind of in, in a weird position where uh, my, my husband, uh, who her father is um, a healthcare worker who has, but one of the ones who has a very reduced schedule right now. Mm. So um, 
ways, uh, unpredictability has been a part of our life for as long as he has done that and still having things being unpredictable, but on a more, uh, a smaller scale is kind of a welcome relief. So sure. <laughs> clearly enough, having things be different <clears throat> randomly on a Wednesday or a Monday is helping <laughs> give a sense of normality. As sure. As yeah. That sounds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, I can tell that the veneer is kind of wearing off of the experience where mm. it's, it's less, yay, I can wear pajamas a good portion of the day has been replaced with, oh, okay, I miss my friends at school a lot. And like we did a, a quick drive by party for mm. one of her classmates uh, last night. And even though it was maybe at most a 20 second interaction as she showed him a sign and then handed it <laughs> to him through a car window, I mean, just the light on their faces getting to see the mm -hmm. interaction there has, I think, maybe brought a sense of like fresh air coming into the submarine mm. or something like that. Yeah. No, I get it, that yeah. There's something else. Uh, I mean, at this point we've been trying to keep a sense of normality with some things. Um, she is as much as she loves playing animal crossing for hours on end <laughs> or playing, um, Pokemon for <laughs> hours on end. Um, she is a fairly active kid and mm -hmm. um, trying to keep her activities up that she's been working at all year have been kind of tough. Uh, mm. Fortunately, um, some of the places that she's done things with have started to release uh, like quick patch workouts. Um, she does classes at Surface Juventus, which she absolutely loves. Oh, cool. And they released um, a couple of different <clears throat> workouts for the various um, uh, disciplines, I guess, that would mm -hmm. be doable at home. Um, there's, so I've kind of encouraged her, you know, even though you don't have, um, we don't have a trampoline and something for you to vault over, let alone the myriad of mats that would even be needed to keep that safe. Um, right. You can you can do some flexibility, and that'll help with other things too. Yeah. Um, I say I, I know I. There's so many other. Um, a lot of places I've noticed that do kids activities have released um, quick uploads or not even quick. In some cases, they're like half hour, hour long um, huh? sessions that would let her um, or let any kid at home really uh, try and keep up with skills that they've learned in the past, or um, if you're enterprising, I guess, try and learn new ones. Mm -hmm. um, she used to do gymnastics at mini hops and they've been doing um, different skill videos that they've put out um, in like trampoline and tumbling or um, there's one that does the basics of a handstand that she's cool. also been working on. Um, and now they're starting to do um, some Zoom classes starting next week. And she's going to be trying, uh, hopefully because she wants to, not, not because... Um, <laughs> didn't badger didn't badger but sure. it mentioned hey this is an option like a couple of times just to kind of get her used to the idea and think about do i really want to do this or or not uh so we'll see how that goes um i will say that there are um lots of places in the twin cities if you want to look at something local that have similar setups um a lot 
at um, gymnastics places, for example, like um, like Twin Cities Twisters, Minneapolis Gymnastics, Kennewood Gymnastics have started um, or made their uh, video options more robust uh, just for anyone following along at home. Um, mm -hmm. there's, Would you be able to find those I, on I like know, YouTube or their websites? Um, yes. <laughs> there's. I, I believe <laughs> cool. that most of them, if not all of them, are hosted on YouTube, sure. but usually uh, their websites will have a, a little portal so you can at least get to different areas of the video. Um, I know that um, dance classes, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of studios are moving towards streaming. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully, um, if she can't do circus in person soon, they'll be able to figure out a way to do some streaming classes at home because right. I, I know she misses it. She goes to building the trapeze right now, or <laughs> <laughs> I, I the downside about researching ideas for your kids to do at home is that suddenly your Facebook ads get filled oh, no. with like it is just all tumble track, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, like a yoga hammock. <laughs> cool. Just, I, <laughs> that age, I'm like, no, we probably shouldn't. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm really hoping not. that all the kids come back to school like super great dancers because they spent yeah, right. the last two months doing just dance on YouTube, like just finding like <laughs> dance songs on YouTube and just doing the just dance along with it. Like that's what I'm hoping is I'm like, I just want them all to like break out into dance at some point, like flash mob style. But for TikTok <laughs> is the thing. Everyone's doing the hand, they're like voguing into the cell phone now, right? Yes, it's all about the TikTok. I, got, I think I'm officially old now because I have zero... Like it's not on my radar. <laughs> it's kind of like Vine, I think. Right. That's what I'm, it's the successor to Vine, pretty much, but okay. with longer format videos and a different way to have them fed to you. Um, Millennial thing. I'm like, man. So it's just Vine. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you young millennials. <laughs> <laughs> As elder millennials didn't have five. Well, I mean, we did. Yeah, I remember, we were just I remember writing old. code in my MySpace. <laughs> it changed the background. Yes. No, MySpace <laughs> is newfangled. <laughs> it was all live journal, man. Oh, man. That was live just, journal just and Yahoo um, Geo Pages and Geo Pages. I had a in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I will mention, though, that a lot of the places that are offering up the free, like, YouTube content and stuff um, also are nonprofits. Oh, so if they are running um, any sort of fundraiser that you see and you have the means to donate, um, it's nice to make sure yeah. that those places can actually be there when kids are when, able yeah. to start thinking about doing in-person okay. stuff again. Yeah. Or at least so that they can keep their staff. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I knew none of those existed. So that's because are those are they free? Like, is it free content? Or do you already have to be a I don't want to say a member, but um, like, would these be for like anyone to do? Or do you pay before? Like, how does that work? It, it depends on what it is. Um, a, a lot of them have uh, anything that's up on YouTube is generally um, available to you for no charge. Mm -hmm. um, Zoom classes, there's a fee for it. Um, I, I haven't had a chance to try out the, whatever individual platform every single place is offering because we haven't gotten quite that bored. But uh, <laughs> at least with um, the experience I can say with registering for uh, the mini hops class is that it's at the moment um, they are doing it uh, week to week. Um, some dance places, I 
believe they're continuing classes that are already there, or they may be registering for something longer. Um, the Zoom class, I, I think, was like $10 for the class, which is yeah <laughs> right it's, I mean, it's hard it to say because we haven't know. done it yet <laughs> so sure that, that too <laughs> and my wife does um zumba on zoom it's zumba uh, uh -huh. she just puts the floor down back here every saturday morning I hear <laughs> pound it around back there um yeah yeah but there's there's always the, also the general traditional free to you activities well we simply mm -hmm. have the equipment like biking and scootering and walking. And um, I, I found actually that trying to focus on getting her out of the house and doing something since mm -hmm. she's young enough to need supervision in most places um, requires that I myself am getting out of the house and moving with her. So sure. it's extra motivation which is nice because <laughs> i would imagine for an eight-year-old it's not like okay we got to work out now it's like we have this activity we're going to go do right yeah well it's, it's more of a hey you've been playing for a long time um uh -huh. have you done any physical activity today you have have you done this have you done this or um just randomly about three o'clock or so it's like you know i was thinking about going for a walk you want to come with me or you yeah. could take your scooter. Um, I was thinking about going for a bike ride. Uh, do you, just out of curiosity. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Uh, do you ever, no, uh, I was just curious, like, do, does your school that your kiddo's at, do you have, do you do uh, like gym class? Like, do they offer like distance learning for gym or like recess, like ideas? Uh, they, the school system that we are in for at least her grade, they have the um, specialist activities um, like PE, art, et cetera, um, as optional. Um, they can go to their individual things. Uh, our district uses Seesaw um, in Seesaw to get information from there. Um, in, I, at least from my perspective, since from my understanding, at least they're considered optional, um, is that as long as she is doing something that falls under those categories, then I'm not going to stress whether it's the exact school activity or if it's um, something else. No, that's super legit. I was just curious. Our school, gym, or our school, um, so like for like gym, like they like created a like mini like workout. So like we have a uh, gym and Mung are like our two specials, and so it's like for gym, uh, do twenty five jumping jacks, ten push ups. Like so there's like a little like circuit for them, and then it like some days it's like uh, take a walk with your family or do three dance along videos, like just sort of like cool. breaking it down into like, yeah. so I was just curious um, cause I've seen no one. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> like how are other schools doing this? Is everyone okay? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I say that the, the school's goal is to try and um, have their independent learning be as independent as possible. Um, mm. And since my kid is a very independent soul, I've <laughs> tried to restrict it just mainly to making sure that you've actually hit everything in that list, right? Instead of not going towards the exact activities mm -hmm. um, for the extra <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. Legit. <laughs> Legit, yeah. Yeah, you, you learn where to give, you learn where to mm -hmm. <laughs> hold firm. Yeah. Distance learning is all about flexibility. Yeah. All about flexibility. Good thing you do so much yoga. Exactly. Right? <laughs> flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will say from experience that if it seems like 
it's a day that is particularly difficult. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably not the day for pushing any sort of skill that they are still mastering um, or are not 100% mm. comfortable from, which we learned the hard way on a, a two mile bike ride that sort of Oof, duh, fell yeah. apart at a mile, like one and a half. <laughs> so. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's no real place to go, but home yeah. from that point. <laughs> so in that sense, great motivation to keep going. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you just have to. And maybe kids are learning to express their feelings of frustration. And it's mm -hmm. a time where they're maybe not expressing them at the exact stressor and if you are yeah. the closest thing then it can be mm -hmm. tricky mm -hmm. yeah. and i think that definitely yeah. rings true for adults too like um it's crazy stressful like no one knows what's going on our whole lives are question marks um and for me normally my big um my big stress release valve is working out. Um, I used to be able to go to jujitsu or kickboxing classes. I love martial arts, but I haven't been able to do that since we had a kid. Um, so like that valve got kind of taken away. I had to shift things over to just weightlifting in my basement, which is still fine, but I can tell there's a difference when, if I have to go a day or two and I'm not able to do my routine, like release thing, how I feel just like, like super tightly wound. And normally I'm able to let things go, but like right now, like everything just hits a little bit harder. You know, everything stings just a little bit more and like keeping track of that and having a, I think that's something that physical fitness and exercise is extremely valuable for, especially right now is as a way to burn it off, like just sweat it out, man, you know, <laughs> and that's be, beyond like the physical um, changes you'll see. Like I, like I was saying that onion article, like this might not be the best time to try and change your life, but it's definitely a great time to start doing things that will improve it overall, you yeah. know, to start building a habit. I'm not going to create a sculpture, but if I want to start, I don't know, drawing, I can do that. It's like small things. So mm -hmm. like, and I think that speaks a lot too about, um, if I'm talking way too much, just let me know. Uh, I think that, that, curtails really well into something I was thinking about earlier today. I lead a kettlebell class for technique on Fridays, and I talked a lot to my athletes then about intent in a workout, uh, because the class that we were doing was a training session, not a workout. And the difference that I made there was that a workout will make you tired, and a training session will make you better. And they don't always have to be separate. Like There's a lot of overlap between those two, but they don't necessarily are the same thing. Like. I can come like some days I just need a workout. I just need to sweat. I just need to move. Like I have ADHD. So I just need to be here doing stuff, getting it out, burning it off. And then there are some days where I need a training session where I can feel proficient at something where I feel like I'm getting better. And Ray, like you said, if I'm having a day where I'm already stressed out, if I'm like burning the candle at both ends and I'm here, like I don't want to spend that time working on my handstand and get to there. Right. Yeah. Like I want to be able to feel good at something um so if it's, instead of if, instead of working out let's say i'm drawing or playing piano you know if i can just sit down and play scales for five minutes that's gonna be much more valuable on a day where i'm just like end of my rope than sitting down and trying to force myself to play something i've never played never touched before in my life because it's on the schedule so like you said flexibility i think is going to be crazy important and yeah. uh, this is something I was talking about earlier with my wife, adjusting expectations about what you're able to do <laughs> with the baby as, as I'm stressed out about the kid. Yeah. Adjusting if I expectations could say, for, that's yes, like the number one something. parenting lesson is adjust expectations, adjust expectations, and then adjust them some more. <laughs> I'm learning that. <laughs> I feel like that can really just be applied to, to this whole quarantine is adjust expectations of, you know, what you think your workout's gonna look like and maybe what your workout really is. Maybe it's just a walk around the block and some mild stretching because you dropped the TV remote under the couch. And you know what, now you're just speaking. It's a good shoulder stretch. 
you know, adjusting those expectations and, and yeah. being okay to be flexible and forgive yourself and, you know, adjust those expectations and maybe not, you know, expectations have to be flexible right now too, is how do we best take care of her as well as mentally. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say someone commented um, in this video that apparently um, there is um, magical yoga is doing a donation based Harry Potter yoga series on Facebook live. Apparently it's every Friday at Ooh. six through May 22nd. And there's nothing that appeals to my Hufflepuff heart than anything <laughs> Harry Potter related. So I'm for sure um, going to take that as uh suggestion i just had to shout it out anything harry potter i'm there so if yeah purely magic yoga if you Wait, haven't what? taken if you haven't taken a class of like magical yogas like harry potter yoga you are in for a treat it's delightful I it's amazing it. it's super oh accessible gosh. like uh, i've taken like several of like rose's classes like so good like I, i'm so excited for you it's lovely for beginners and it's oh no Mariah I lost you I couldn't hear what you said oh, oh I was just gonna say my Harry Potter collection is like right, Hold on. right here. <laughs> yeah right over there anyway um that's all it was nothing really that important but anyway Harry Potter yoga I've never done yeah. it I'm so excited now that someone here has it's... and said it's awesome so good great for beginners great for all ability levels great for anyone who has like an injury or is in, like in recovery for an injury or has accessibility issues if you know you're worried oh i can't do yoga everybody can do it it's fun you'll love it hmm. oh my gosh that's <laughs> yeah, i'm super now. excited i just like knew i was like i saw a pop up pop up on here and i'm like i have to talk about this but yeah, so i never heard i never heard of magical yoga before until yes. 30 seconds uh, amazing so good oh yeah so uh, yeah and, and it's every friday at six cool is it free oh it's donation based never mind okay cool i can do that so sweet all right is there anything that we haven't touched on that we would like to hit on now i know we've talked about a lot of really really broad and really um detailed the health-based conversations thus far, but is there anything that we haven't, yeah, that we haven't touched on yet? Mm. I know something I really wanted to touch on was the mental health aspect of it, but I think we kind of like just ran through. I feel really good about that. Um, the physical aspect of it, of working out at home, doing things with equipment or without, adaptive stuff, obviously, working with the family. Um, oh, was there like stream questions? Is that a thing we do? Yeah. I think the only other thing that um, we may want to revisit is um, there was someone who said it was really useful when we talked about alternatives to fancy workout gear. So, ah. you know, obviously we mentioned soup cans, textbooks, <clears throat> a lot of different items. If we have any like <clears throat> last minute, like what are, what, oh, uh, I think Britt's got something I I'm going to. I got some. Um, okay, good. <laughs> sorry, I got excited. I love it. And it no, I love it. Was it was a whole body excitement. Um, so uh, one thing too, a lot of times if you're doing like a yoga video or even just some like stretching um, and it says something about a strap and you don't have a strap, you're like, great, now I have to go buy a strap. Just use a towel or like a blanket, something, maybe not something super fluffy, but just like a regular towel. And it just more or less brings your toes closer to you. Uh, and remembering that if you like nothing magical happens when you touch your toes, you get the same stretch whether or not you're touching your toes. I don't um, unlock no, the power. Yeah, no, nothing. You know, it's it's really actually disappointing. Like I didn't yeah, I get, get you know X-ray vision or anything. It's just <laughs> <laughs> my my Hogwarts letter didn't show up. It just was like, oh, uh, well, this just happened. It's really kind of anticlimactic. Um, <laughs> but no, towels um, are great. Um, using a chair or a wall, even if you're like feeling, if you're trying out a balancing pose for the first time um, or trying out, maybe you're working on pistols, which are like the mm. one-legged squats with one going out in front of you, using a wall uh, to help you. Like walls, they're great. They're like the best prop ever because they're just there. 
Um, yeah. Trying to think of any other ones. I got so excited about the towel, I forgot the other ones I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> and that was mentioned in uh, Yoga with Adrian too. She uh, she mentioned a towel as well. Oh, yeah. Hoopy fruit awesome. and know where you your probably... towel is. I was just about to say that. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say you can roll it up as long as you know you're a real fruit and those were your tile with that. Um, as far as other impromptu stuff, like uh, like I said, heavy objects, backpacks full of stuff, textbooks are very, very good. I'm looking around my room right I now. I love the idea else. of that. Right? I love the it idea almost of the feels backpack. Like and then like doing back squats. Like if you have a PVC pipe at home, just like practicing your back squat yeah. position. Like I really miss like powerlifting and like Olympic weightlifting and like yeah. I really miss it and so like it's just not the same because I don't have like a rack in my house and I'm just like I just want to lift everything right. I'm gonna now try putting a bunch of books in a backpack and just do some squats give it a shot <laughs> try it too where you put the books in the bag instead of wearing it you carry it in the front and like a bear hug and then walk up and down stairs like that because that's oh going to engage your, your, your shoulder, the front belts, <laughs> and the biceps, and the core a lot. Uh, goblet squats with a heavy bag. Bruh. That sounds horrible. I love it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to suck, all, it's gonna suck <laughs> so much. It sounds like an intense sensation. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to even say like it, it's a it's a spicy modification too. Spicy. spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Muy picante, yeah. Oh, and a lacrosse ball, of course. I think we mentioned that earlier. Yeah, a lacrosse ball or a baseball, you said, tennis ball, workout oh, knots. Yeah. If you don't have a foam yeah. roller, put up against the wall, dig around in there. Mm -hmm. um, like, I think no one's going to get massages these days, or at least I hope you're not. So that might be the second best thing. And honestly, yeah. that's that actually brings up something that might be really important, too, is like accessibility to the equipment itself. Like, if you want to pick up a kettlebell, if you want to pick up dumbbells, good luck, dude, because they are sold yeah. out everywhere like straight like i've been telling my clients for a long time get a kettlebell like now's the time do it do it do it and then like three weeks ago like everyone was like we're out they're done and like they're people at the foundries are like quarantine so they're not they're literally not even making more kettlebells they're just gone gone they're extinct uh... yeah it sucks and now like a few of the places that i really look to have opened back up and then Ooh, people are scooping them and then reselling them for like seven hundred dollars, which like I've definitely gotten seven hundred dollars in value bell. out of my kettlebell, right? Yes. But they should sell for like a lot of hundred. Yeah, See, my that. CrossFit gym, you could actually check them out because they have they're just doing online classes now. Like mm -hmm. you could like go in and like say, hey, I'm coming in at this time. There'd be a coach yeah. there, or they would put it out for you, and you just sign off that okay, I have one of the you know ten kg kettlebells, like, and you just. Yeah. You, then you just have it until quarantine is done. So, like that yeah, was the, really one of the gyms that I train at, Soda Fitness, uh, we did that as well. And we had even had a couple people come out and get the Airdyne bikes. And now they're posting all the time, like, I wish I hadn't done that because now I have the Airdyne here and I just have to do it. <laughs> like, great. I thought, that I thought I wanted to do this, but I lied. Yeah, right. This, is, this is a huge mistake. Now I have yeah. to do it. <laughs> I would say the only other thing I would add um, is I've like, sounds kind of odd, but I've used my water bottle as resistance before. So like, oh, I'll yeah. put like, this is my Wonder Woman one. Um, I'll put like a bunch of ice and water in here and then I'll just do like tricep dips. And like, for again, it's, it's one of those things where uh, if you do the movement at a slower pace, you can, you do actually mm. feel it. Like I was shocked. Uh, putting ice and water into this 20 ounce water bottle doing that or even just like concentrated like bicep curls and just really like slowly doing the movement um that's something i've done for myself and that's worked out too uh you can use water bottles as well as like uh foam rollers so like if you have like metal water bottles or like a oh, nalgene bottle like something like yeah. sturdy i wouldn't do it with a blender bottle because it'll pop open and it'll be a mess um but like my uh, hydro flask, I love it because it's metal, it's sturdy, it gives you that same yeah. sort of pressure release. Awesome. I never thought of that before. That's a good idea. I haven't. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of it too boils down to creativity too, which is mm -hmm. not a strength of mine. But even just looking around, I mean, even here, I mean, I'm seeing video games and right. my Magic the Gathering cards are in that. Binder over there that's super heavy or 
Um, hmm, what else? I have a big stormtrooper with a holding a pumpkin. I don't know. That could probably be a story. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You know I, I, in all seriousness, though, I think it's just being creative with what you have. Yeah. Because you know, yeah, I mean, it, hey, the stud stormtrooper holding a pumpkin is probably like seven pounds at least, probably. Right. <laughs> Give some squats. So, Give some lunges. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like back squat. The mm-hmm. pumpkin would probably hit you in the in the back of the neck, but I don't know. Put uh, it in a backpack. Yeah. So I think it's. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Put the stormtrooper in a backpack. That's your weight. If you don't want to use textbooks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Enclose the stormtrooper. But yeah, I. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you have. Um, whatever you have access to. The other. The other thing I was going to say. This does involve spending money, so I could see why you wouldn't want to do it, but. What? I know it's spending money, but if you want to just your bike to that would be a probably an easy way to do it. Or, um, oh, sorry. It might be an easy to, but that's that's spending money so yeah yeah the bike can you hear me now yeah yes <laughs> oh yes. there we go um no i was gonna say the um uh red bike stand if you want to bring your bike indoors mm-hmm. yeah i had one of those in the basement for a while it's like a a, a wheelie deal is that the, the official word for the the back of the bike yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got one for like yeah. 50 bucks on Craigslist, so they don't have to be terribly expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you said, using anything. So even if you have like the Star Wars helmet of the the guy, the Stormtrooper, um, and you're doing squats, if that doesn't feel hard enough, you can always adjust the movement yourself. Um, so if the weight isn't heavy enough, make the move harder. So if a squat isn't too hard, try a lunge. If that's not too hard, try a jumping lunge. If that's not too hard, try skipping jumping lunges. You know, there's always more plyometrics, actually, a really useful tool if you're looking for to up the intensity. You know, I feel like we've talked a lot about um, being very adaptive and starting from very brand new. But if you're someone who is used to doing very intense workouts and suddenly you don't have that access to this equipment or the space anymore, like, how do I? I've seen a lot of memes. Like, yeah, you can do push ups and pull ups all day, but how do you overload your legs? for to stimulate growth how do you how do you get uh, general ad- adaptation syndrome on your legs when you have no weights at all to speak of and the answer is stairs or sprints or hills or just like so many jump lunges gotta hit them so much <laughs> or kids uh, lord knows i've done enough of them or kids yeah just pick those if guys up lots of them, just them. one in front one in back you're good yeah <laughs> <laughs> although you just like wrestle them a lot and just like wrangle them oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Actually, it's an arm friends. workout for them if they're curling onto you, and then yeah. the core if they're oh, using your kids. legs, <laughs> <laughs> and then aerobic for you if you're running around while they do that. <laughs> it's, right. It's a full yeah. family workout. Exactly. <laughs> <sighs> I guess the last thing I'd say is um, don't forget to try things that you remember from when you yourself were a kid. Um, Mm. within reason Um, so like if you did ballet class when you were a kid um, maybe try a simple bar routine because chances are you did the same one year after year and a year and it's probably burned into your brain (laughs) Um, just don't start with the hard stuff Um, like soccer drills um, (laughs) sprints that you might have done for football uh, just going back and forth between the lines pretty easy and you know you can mm. race your kid <laughs> yeah that's a great idea actually and i that i assume most of that stuff would probably get you outside and getting uh, that sunshine as well which is really really helpful yeah as long as it stays nice it's just a crap shoot dude in minnesota too yeah <laughs> It makes us like tough. we like, all nervously laugh <laughs> <laughs> yeah right hope it doesn't snow tomorrow right. I'm, just, no, I'm, just, I'm just that's just an example when was the last time it snowed last year right oh my right. god like, 
Crap. I'm, I'm so <laughs> sorry if I invoked anything. That was not my intent. <laughs> <laughs> what offerings do we make? Do we have to do like a non rain dance or something like that? Snow dance. <sighs> Yeah, I mean the only the only other thing I really wanted to bring up, um, yeah. Todd, when you get a chance, if you could bring up the Instagram screenshots um, I had sent, um, just because with being in quarantine, um, with being in quarantine, I know I'm like probably more harsh on my body right now. Ah, thank you. Um, okay, no, I um, I screenshotted just a couple body positive accounts like I really love just um just some positivity and just permission to just really give yourself a little extra love um and so these were a couple I really liked um I picked them just because they um it's a more diverse body type and I also find that they show like fat rolls which I think is so important mm. like just I don't know just, um just having a positive feed right now and just reminding yourself that it's a really tough time. Like, you know, you have permission to love the body that you're in. Um, so I just screenshotted a couple of these just to have that positivity. You know, we all are our harshest. Um, we all are harshest on ourselves. And I just love all of these accounts. Just they just make me happy and just give you permission to really just give your body a little extra love. So no. So Body Posy Panda. Yes. Yeah. Body Posy Panda is delightful. Um, yes. Oh, good. Like, oh, he talks a lot about like fat phobia and like internalized fat phobia and like sort of how it plays out in the world. Um, it, it kind of goes back to that placing moral judgments on food, on your body, on working out, you know, yeah. fitness. Like, what does that mean for everybody? Because everyone's, or healthy, not fitness, but like healthy. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's right. healthy looks different, um, but no, absolutely fantastic. Yep. And she has a book out, Body, Potty, Body, Posy, Panda. Ugh. Um, yeah, she has a book out um, that dismantles diet culture. I just bought it. I have not read it yet, but I will probably read it in quarantine just because. Um, yeah, it's, well, just, a good, it's just a good reminder. Mm -hmm. cool. You know what that book is called? Oh, I could run and grab it it's on my end table. Um, here, that's what Google's for. Let me look. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> I could. I mean, I could just grab it. Oh wait, it's okay. Wait, it's Body Positive Power: How to Stop Dieting, Make Peace with Your Body, and Live. And her name is Megan Jane Crab. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I. But I love her to pieces. She's just so like fun and um, just. Yeah, I just, I love her. <laughs> um, if you are finding too right now, like you're having a harder time with food or maybe it's like something that you've struggled with before. Uh, if you like podcasts, um, there is um, a podcast. Um, hold on, now I'm going to look it up because I don't want to mess up the name of the podcast. Um, it's absolutely delightful. It's by a uh, registered dietitian uh, who uh, focuses on the health at every size model. Uh, and intuitive eating. Um, oh my gosh. Oh, now that's, I love it. yeah. Oh, it's a food psych podcast. Okay. Uh, and it's with Christy Harrison. Um, okay. Yeah. I've so if you're that. ever finding you need like a little bit of extra sort of like space to like kind of think about it and deal with it and listen to somebody else talk about it and how it is okay to you know have struggles like with food but also like hey like you are great as you are your body is strong and powerful and it does so many cool amazing things for you um food psych is great so cool thank you i have to look that up too yeah yeah it's awesome i felt i fell into it last year and i was like there's a nice like backlog of um things mm -hmm. and like she interviews different people so um, it's awesome. So she interviews like different like celebrities who deal with it, but also like just people who are like, um, like maybe bloggers or things like that, uh, which is awesome. So it's kind of like a range of things for your interests. So. Very cool. 
You guys have been like a Another, font of information um, for me tonight. <laughs> yeah, no, same. Um, no, I was going to say the one other podcast that popped in my head is uh, Jamila Jamil has a podcast now for her I Weigh mm. movement. Her so um, more of um, just recognizing your worth is beyond the scale. And um, that whole Instagram page too, I think it's just called I Weigh. Um, mm. But it just shows like... Um, submissions of what people submit and then they say well like i weigh i'm a great sister or like i don't know it's just very it's, it's getting away from the scale being your worth and your health so that's another one mm -hmm. i would say yeah all right um any anything else that we haven't covered um Otherwise, I mean, are we ready to kind of conclude or where are we, where are we at? Um, I think I got it all off my chest. Yeah. I, like I said, I've learned a lot from you guys already. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. Uh, yes. Thank you. Well, my, do like a, there. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's do like a concluding thing. So like maybe um, whether you plug the socials, like where you're at, um, why don't we just do like a conclusion where can people find you? And then we'll cool. uh, I'll jump in on, on that first. Um, you can find me on socials at D20 Athletics at pretty much anything. I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. I don't really use my YouTube a whole lot or my Twitter, but I'm very active on Instagram. Look for me, D20 Athletics. I run D20Athletics.com. That's my personal training website. It's all remote training. Check it out. I have a two-week free trial. Uh, all my training is um, delivered via a free-to-download app called Train Heroic. Um, there are workouts already on my site. There's also T-shirts. Uh, this one is a one-off. I'm sorry, you can't have it. It's mine. Um, but and you can find me on Facebook. I have a D20 Nerd Herd. That's my social group. That's where I stream my workout classes every morning, or sorry, every Monday morning um at like nine or eleven o'clock something like that it's usually bodyweight stuff too i think last week i did a kickboxing based workout and those are all saved on the on the thing so if you're looking for something to do check that one out it's free you can join in i'll let you in trust me i'm ray you can find a lot of my writing on twin cities geek um i know i have uh one book review at least in the pipeline that's going to be coming out at some point uh, otherwise i have a lot that's on there you can find me on twitter at s ship underscore suburbia um that's pretty about it cool i'm up uh i'm brit um you can find me on uh well right now it's just email uh, so it's Britt Johnson Yoga, so B-R-I-T-T-J-O-H-N-S-O-N, yoga at gmail.com. Um, I'm looking at once the school year is starting to wrap up right now, uh, so within the next few weeks, I'm looking at doing uh, donation-based yoga classes uh, probably through either Zoom or Facebook uh, events. Um, so if you're interested, if you have questions about how to make yoga accessible for you, uh, please feel free to just give me an email. Uh, this is not like super secret information. You shouldn't have to pay anyone to figure out how to make yoga and movement feel good for your body. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find me. Sweet. And I've been your, I've attempted to be a host. Um, I'm Mariah. You can find me on uh, Twin Cities Geek. And then I primarily use my Instagram at bizarrebrunette0117. So you can find me there. And then, um, yes, I definitely want to do that magical yoga, Harry Potter. I'm going to be there next Friday, 100%. So with that being said, thank you all for just like panelists, anyone who sat and watched us talk for almost an hour and a half. Your attention you. span is really good. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm two hours. thankful for that. Right. Yeah. So well, thank you all. And everyone stay safe out there. Please wear your masks. Wash your hands. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys.